Hello to the regular visitors of the channel and a special welcome and invite to the new visitors to subscribe. Okay, so this is a C5 Chevrolet Corvette. This particular one is a 2003 Z06 and today we're gonna talk about audio. First of all, I'm gonna show you how this car in particular was before in terms of audio, of course. How is it today? And finally, I'm gonna show you how to replace every single component of the audio system in the car. Uh, you might find this video useful, more useful, uh, if your car is like this one, a fixed roof coupe or hardtop, even what they call in forums uh, the vert. Uh, but if you have a coupe or a convertible, you will find uh, some differences in the trunk area uh, in relation to the wire guidance uh, in between the panels. Uh, and the carpet. So let's get started. The factory audio system in these cars is manufactured by Bose or at least a collaboration with General Motors and Bose and in this car the stock head unit was gone. It was replaced with this aftermarket Wondin unit. It's a JBC KDR840BT in conjunction with this faceplate, which is manufactured by Metra, I think, to make this 1D unit uh, fit correctly in the 1.5D area in the dashboard. The speakers were the stock ones. These five and a quarter inches speakers uh, were located in the rear area behind the driver's seat and the passenger seat right there uh, they are in great condition all of them uh, the front speakers uh, the ones installed in the front door uh, were these little twiddlers which are three and a half inches size and there's also the mid-range woofers which are located here behind the grill. But as you might know, if you have read about audio in these cars, uh, they are wired to a little Bose amplifier, which only works with the original head unit. So how did they make this unit work? Here, uh, they had this little interface, which is called the XB, XSVI 2004, manufactured by Axis. And what it does, uh, it's to allow communication from the Bose amplifiers uh, into the new or the aftermarket head unit. The audio quality with this system uh, was okay. Uh, it's pretty decent. I cannot compare uh, how this particular head unit uh, was better or worse uh, compared to the stock uh, head unit, but you know this one uh, gave you uh, you know the modern functionalities that the stock unit uh, was not giving you, like the USB, Bluetooth, uh, the possibility to answer your calls, and all of that. So, in general, it was a good uh, stock system, but you know, it can always be better, so let's keep on. Now let's see how the audio system is today in this car. As I told you earlier, the factory head unit is not there anymore, and the JVC unit, uh, it's already outside the car. So, the next upgrade, was this. Okay, that beautiful screen you see there, it's a Chinese car stereo or a head unit. Uh, the brand is Joing and the model number is 
HQS01N4G-1. Yes, I had to write it down. I can't remember that reference. But anyway, uh, if you look it online on the Join website or eBay or Amazon or whatever, uh, you can find it as the 8.8 .8 inches uh, head unit. you later uh, when we go to the process of installing new things for the for the audio components in here I will show you uh, how this unit was was fit in there at this point let me show you a little bonus that was installed here uh, there's a, a little switch here which uh, final location will be in that little hole you see up there so let's see what it does uh, there's an there's a video input app in here let me turn on the switch and there you go that's a camera let's see where it is located Yes, it is a front view camera right there. Just in the middle of the car underneath the front bumper. As you know, uh, the car is very low, so it's, it is just for helping on the parking approach. Uh, whenever you are in front on a curb or whatever obstacle is in the parking area. Well, returning to the audio, uh, you will ask, uh, what about the speakers? Uh, in this car, the idea was to keep the uh, original uh, mid-range woofers from Bose with the little amplifier uh, just for not messing uh, anymore with the wiring uh, because if you change that uh, mid-range woofer then new wiring will have to be uh, directed uh, into the head unit and the in the interface will have to be uh, eliminated removed removed from the car so a uh, simple speaker swap was the way to go and uh, there's direct fit uh, speakers uh, these uh, were the first ones uh, they are uh, little uh, coaxial speakers from kicker this is the reference 46 CSZ 354 these are replacements for the twiddlers in this area the size is is just uh, the same as the stock ones three and a half inches and the second upgrade these are larger these are five and a quarter inch and this is the reference 46 CSC 54. Uh, these are for the rear part of the car. Just right here behind behind that grill, of course. The result uh, to be honest uh, was not uh, great. Uh, actually uh, the sound it was no better than with the previous speakers or the previous JBC unit. Uh, we uh, we messed a lot with the with the equalization of the head unit. Uh, there there was uh, some time invested here to 
achieve the best sound possible but uh, the quality was not uh, was simply was not good uh, the last attempt to get something out of this simple audio setup was to get uh, a source of bass uh, but in the fixed roof coupe uh, or the hardtop the space is not uh, very generous so uh, it was decided that the best choice was a low profile active subwoofer let me show you it's in here in the trunk And it's a Rockbill RCA W10. It's the reference. Let me double check. And this is it. RW10CA. The Rockbill Active 800 watts low profile subwoofer. The original idea with the subwoofer uh, was to leave it uh, below this hard cover. If you can see here, uh, this can be removed. Right here, uh, in this inclination. And still there was uh, space available for the tire repair kit. But, uh, as you can imagine, uh, leaving the subwoofer in there with this cover on top and this closed, well, the base will be completely hidden in there. So it was decided to leave the subwoofer just uh, on top of the cover uh, even though it will take uh, the cargo area, uh, it was just a matter of unplugging the cables in case uh, cargo space was needed. But the stealth look that was uh, the initial idea um, was not going to be possible. So uh, we removed the partition and tested the uh, subwoofer without partition and to be honest uh, it's uh, it's not uh, what we were expecting uh, it doesn't feel punchy I mean you can feel some bass in in the cabin and if you get here in the trunk uh, definitely you can feel uh, some punch but inside the passenger and driver area mm, it was it was not working but that's enough jibber jabber. Let's check how the actual system sounds. I got the microphone here, so uh, I hope you can get a, if you have good speakers in whatever device you're listening to this video, I hope you can get uh, a little bit of the bass that you uh, I'm hearing here.
I'm pretty sure the base I was uh, feeling here was not correctly uh, captured by this little microphone. Probably the low frequencies are not uh, suit suitable for this kind of microphone. But still, in general, uh, let me tell you that uh, for being an upgraded audio system, it's still not uh, not very good. Uh, I mean, if you're hearing this at a uh, mild volume, um, I'm pretty sure it will be okay. But if you if you push it harder, uh, you will hear distortion. Uh, the the bass will feel muddy and the high frequencies uh, are not very crisp so in general uh, it's it's not a good set setup so mm, it's 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 something uh, that mu must be upgraded uh, in general not uh, component by component if we want to achieve something of good quality and with some more power so what are we going to put in here? This. Okay, so the first step uh, will be to prepare the car for getting all of these wires inside the car. So we're going to remove all the vessels, trims and panels, console, whatever is required to get the cables in there. But first of all, uh, we're going to remove the battery. Okay, uh, we'll need this area uh, without the battery as we have to uh, bring the power cable for the amplifier uh, in these grommets. Now let's go to the car's interior. Here we have to remove the center bezel or radio bezel, console they call it and uh, there is uh, already all of the bolts that need to be removed here are already removed because i was working in the car uh, basically just the two here and the one that goes here behind the little grill this one which is i'm talking about you can just pry it out with a screwdriver taking care not to scratch the plastic and uh, you need just to bring this up there back there so you have area to find the weight out of this uh, of this piece uh, the the gear shift uh, the gear knob on the e-brake uh, lever uh, will make this a little difficult, but uh, there's uh, there's a way of getting this out with not much trouble. Just just try to find your way.
then this cover underneath the steering wheel uh, will have to go out. There's uh, three screws uh, holding it there. Let me get the first one out. It's underneath the trunk release button. It comes out uh, really easy. Unplug the connector. And there's a Torx screw in there. Next one is the door bezel, this black plastic piece. Uh, first, you'll have to push it up in the back area. Okay, there's clips in here and in here. So this one uh, will have to come this way. But first, these ones must be already unhooked. Here's one clip, two clips, three clips, and the one in the upper part which goes in the other way. This panel is also in the way, so we'll have to remove it by releasing the seat belt holding screw right in here. But first, uh, we need access from the chair. But as you remember, uh, we already disconnected the battery. So uh, you'll have to do the following. Uh, you can just put the battery back in the car or you can use uh, some uh, jump start cables. To give power to the seat for a while. First, with a screwdriver, uh, just uh, remove the, the screw cover. Okay. There you can see the, there's another Torx bolt. We need to remove this one, 
but uh, as you can see, it is covered uh, with the with the with this one up here. So we'll have to remove first everything here, which is a this one is the one covering the speaker. It's a complete piece, uh, but to remove this one, we have to remove uh, the this cover on the trunk. So I'll I'll show you how to remove that now. Okay, it's very hard working with tools and a camera and a light in the hand, but I'll try my best to show you. Uh, there's uh, one clip in here and there's another clip in here. So those two uh, must go out. Let me show you the correct way to get them out so you, you don't break them. I'll get my light in there. Okay, first uh, with a screwdriver, uh, just uh, pull it out a little. Be careful not to scratch the trim. Okay, uh, then you need some pliers so you can uh, get them out straight. Let me see if I can do it here. Okay. Okay, there it goes. Now the other one. Okay. Now the whole trim just must go out. Uh, there's also clips in here so you must uh, you must pull it up. Don't don't pull it down, just pull it up towards you. Okay. There you see the clips. And there's the holes for the clips. Now there's another clip in here. Uh, that's for this uh, for this panel. And you will just uh, pull it off the same way as we did with the others. Actually, you can pull this one a little bit with the with the same trim. And that's it. This panel must can be removed. Oh, also, there is another little cover in here. Let me show you. That is very. There is only a single clip, two clips in this one.
Okay, now we have here access to the rear speakers. Oh, these are the coaxial uh, kicker speakers that I showed you earlier on the video.